Uh, Simon, you just talk about the art of astonishment, the moment of astonishment. Is that something you try to build into your work? Even the most skeptical observer of magic can all of a sudden have their paradigm popped by a magical illusion. And all of a sudden, all of the linear thinking and all of their logical foundations that they've depended on their entire lives at that moment falls away. And in that moment of astonishment, there's a potential for transformation. Another thing that the magician, that I as a magician, try to do on stage is remind people that you're the magicians in your own lives, and I'm just here to remind you. You know, you have choices and you can do anything you want. You can shape your life and make your life anything you want to be, just the way the magician can apparently shape reality. I have many, many questions, but it's probably only fair and here to open up uh, a little bit. Any questions for um, Jeff? No, where do you think David Blaine just what seemed like physical stunts rather than magic? Well, a lot of his things had to do with him turning, being totally still, being buried underneath water, being frozen in a block of ice. They're about stillness. And when we live in an age where there's a Starbucks on every corner, <laughs> and we live in a hyper-caffeinated, technological, sped-up society where everybody's on a cell phone all the time and plugged into their Blackberry, it's like, ah, look at him! He stands still! He does nothing longer than anyone has ever done nothing! I can't believe how much nothing he can do! And, but it's, you know, it's a statement in our times that the person that can be still and at peace and with themselves without being constantly distracted or pulled by desires is actually accomplishing something miraculous. That's the middle of it. Yes, I, I'm not very interested in uh, sleight of hand because it, it's all very clever, but it doesn't arouse me in any way. <laughs> That's a different show of the world. <laughs> Wow, that's, I think slight of land. What interests me is the is the big illusion. So in the magic show, it's one of the few places where people can come close to death in a theatrical art form. The buzzsaw illusion of of Horace Gold and the sawing and half trick was, as we know it in popular culture, was Percy Tibbles. Uh, uh, P.P. Selbit was his, the, the name so, Tibbles backwards. Made this trick famous, the sawing in half of a man, but it wasn't as horrific as Goldstein's version sawing a woman in half, taking advantage of a, a helpless woman and putting her in a box and sawing in her half. And they had units of this show touring all over the world simultaneously. So these kind of illusions have always fascinated us, these death and resurrection illusions. And they also speak to a mythic theme of the indestructibility of the feminine of nature. Uh, obviously, a huge thanks to the Dana Centre. Uh, good stuff for coming on with the, the eye tracking. Uh, obviously, to uh, Jeff, I know you're going to thank him at the end of the event, but for the moment, a round of applause for everyone who's been involved. <laughs>